Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woki, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. What are we doing today? I figure I'd talk about what the next event that's going to be coming up, which should be Nero Fest, as you see here. Currently, we're waiting for either Nero Fest, Summer, and then the next download campaign. Funny enough, there is another banner which is going to feature Morgan again. <laughs> But, in terms of event, it should be Nero Fest coming up, hopefully pretty soon. In the JP version of the game, we already had it by the time Anniversary came around, but because of NA, even in Korea, they already had uh, Nero Fest, but we haven't actually had it yet, so... Let's go into it! So, Nero Fest, aka the early summer rerun of Grand Fest Nero. What is Nero? Nero Fest, Nero Fest is a Lotto-type event, which is going to be great for grinding. Uh, basically, if you don't know how lotto events work, um, there's a lotto box, and as you can see here, it's infinite, you can do it infinitely. In the first 10 boxes, they have grand prizes, and you can, uh, skip the box after you open the grand prize, and this is everything that's inside the box. I would suggest that you wait until you get the grand prize and a silver and a golden apple if you're looking to rush the event you want to get at least those because once we get to box 11 those are the items that no longer appear in it um, this is again if you're rushing it i usually get absolutely everything because i realized i don't care i'll just get everything so we'll be getting these ce's which will help with the challenge quests we have uh the golden foes and then we also have olympian gym uniform outfit unlock permit which is the outfit for nero uh, which you can see right here and yeah inside the boxes itself there's a really this is a really good way if you just need to farm these specific materials and a bunch of QP which is what I plan to do um, I have plenty of these materials actually I have plenty of forbidden pages night metals heroes proof chains of the fool and voids refuse or just like dust but a lot of these are used by a lot of characters and you need a lot of them <laughs> The only reason I have a lot is that when this Nero Fest came out previously, I grinded a whole bunch to make sure that I had enough for everything. So, and the, the limit is, is how much you want to do. Not a lot of people can actually stand Lotto Grind. They find it very boring, and then some other people just automate it. It's up to you to decide how you want to do it. I always do it manually. I just kind of have a chill time while watching a movie or a TV show that I really need to catch up on or something, and that's what I do. Up to you how you do it. But yeah, that's going to be inside the Lotto. Which is very nice, but there's some other cool stuff inside here. Um, and there's also challenge quests. These are old challenge quests. These challenge quests, which I think this is the original JP, which was in 2016. Um, these are the challenge quests that feature a bunch of different bosses. All these bosses have pretty unique mechanics. The 2016 one is going to be much easier because this was before Merlin was in the game. And before Merlin ruined everything, there was no such thing as break bars. If you see in here... Break bars exist, and that's because that's when Merlin exists. <laughs> Pre Merlin, after Merlin. <laughs> I can't remember if that was actually pre Merlin or if it was just like we hadn't fully understood how much Merlin was going to destroy the game. I forget which one it is. But either way, um, these were definitely designed before the idea that a 50% critter, that you could give your uh, dude 100% uh, crit attack up and then completely devastate the boss in one single stroke. So all these challenge quests are different. This is Herc, this is Skahawk and uh, Colin. This is 100 Hassans, this is Siegfried, this is Queen Maeve, this is Gilgamesh, and this is the finale which is post-nerf and this is when it was pre-nerfed. Uh, the pre-nerf version was extremely tough that a lot of people couldn't handle. I think we could probably handle it now. And completing these usually gives you <clears throat> a ticket. <clears throat> In the case of, like, Act 6. Um, and a different uh, skill stuff, too. Like the Dragon's Reverse. And all of it's different. So in total, if you did all this, it'd be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 tickets single tickets for summoning which is pretty <clears throat> damn nice excuse me i'm recording this a little bit earlier so my voice is a little weird and yeah i think these are always fun to kind of mess around and play with and kind of like figure out the strategies and figure it out yourself um you could do it many different ways you could just get this uh specific lotto 
which will give you 100% damage up or 200% up, or if you're like a masochist, you can just do this without that and try and do it. You can do it solo, you can do it so many different ways, and if <laughs> all you care about is a single ticket, then you can kind of go for it and just like try, brute force your way into getting it. It shouldn't be that hard. I say that, but if I remember correctly, NA has the fixed version of this fight, which in J JP, it turned out that the main the main way you beat this fight was that you put BB, who had 100% death resistance, uh, in the front row so that she always caught a specific move that um, Hassan did over here, which was, I think... Um, yeah, the start of the turn, 500% chance to inflict taunt up, and then oh, by 300% to the first enemy for one attack, one turn. It turns out that it ended up being that it wasn't supposed to be for to the first enemy for one attack, one turn. <clears throat> it was to whatever unit, and they fixed it, and it made this fight borderline impossible to actually do. So we'll see if uh, it's going to be any more possible. I remember trying this when it first came out, and it felt impossible. Very few people on NA, I think, actually were able to complete it because of that, but uh, we'll see when it comes back how much it does with how much years have passed since he last showed up. Maybe this boss is just going to be super easy. Looking at that HP pool, it sure doesn't feel like it would be, but hey, we'll see. Um, and then you also have to deal with like a hundred Hassans that are also fighting you at the exact same time. <laughs> Fun! Um... And yeah, in terms of the event campaigns, there's a two times great and uh, great and super suck chance that's going to go on with Servant and Crash Deathens. We already have that, so I don't know if that just gets replaced. If you have the Olympian Bloomers, you get a rare Mana Prism, and if you use a specific thing to buy it in the Costume Unlock Permit, you just get a refund of those five rare Mana Prisms back. This is kind of how the structure looks like with all the different units that are going to be in it as like the final bosses of the specific grind nodes. Nothing really different about these like lineups other than like, oh it's cool that they're in there i think you can grind specific material but you know i've never super focused on that too much in terms of the vent ce's there's cheer for master which is a great brunhilde um cheerleading outfit here that this is drops the crimson petals which you will use for the lotto and yeah the divine three-legged race which features quets always nice to see her up in anything <clears throat> in the event shop itself there's actually a lot of good materials in here like you can see here Egg, uh, Scarab, uh, Cursed Beast thing, Phoenix Feather, and Crystal. 30, 30, 15, 15, 15. All for, five, all for the gold uh, medal. For the silver medal, there's the pot. There's the talon. There's this thing. The Scales of Fantasies, which is going to be very good for um, a lot of units. <laughs> a lot of the Lost Bill 6 units use this. <clears throat> so you need a lot of them. There should be 45 of them in there. <clears throat> Horseshoes, uh, Infinity Gear, and in the Bronze Medal, we have the Bell, we have the Ash, we have the Idrisil Seed, Homunculus Baby, and the Bloodstone Tear. I also need a lot of these. <laughs> Please, I need more Tiny Bells. I don't have enough. And yeah, that's very good event shop, very good things. And then let's look at the summoning campaign, which for a lot of people is going to be end up being skipped. But I'll go over these units regardless. It is Brunhilde and Summer Nero. I would suggest that you skip this, unless you're a big fan of Summer Nero or Brunhilde, because they are both limited. Uh, on NA, we should have two separate banners for them, because when this released on JP, uh, it was before Pity existed. So it, it should be formatted in the new format. <clears throat> now let's uh, quickly go over them, I guess. Uh, Brunhilda, she is limited. She was actually the poster. Ch the funny enough, if you want to know why this has a sad Brunhilda, it's because she used to be the poster child of limited units never coming back. Uh, it took a very long. It took until this Nero Fest for her to actually come back from her debut. So her first skill is Mana Burst Flame B. Increase on Buster performance for one turn. Increase their MP damage for one turn. Twenty-five percent, fifteen percent. You can tell that she's a very old unit. <laughs> Primeval Rune, which is the strength version, charges on MP gauge, reduces one enemy's critical attack chance for three turns, and reduces their MP damage for one turn. MP is 30%, 50%, 30% damage, crit chance, and MP damage down is 50% and 30%. Third skill, which is the Hero's Bridesmaid C++, increases one ally's critical star absorption for three turns, increases their crit damage for three turns, and recovers their HP. The absorption is 300%, the crit damage is 40%, the heal is 3000, and the cooldown is 5. Uh, and the other one's cooldowns are 6 and 5, which means she can go perfectly with Vich and you should be able to kind of easily 
use it, I think, anyway. Yeah, 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 it should be possible, anyway. <coughs> Passive skills are Magic Resistance B, Writing A, and Divinity E. Her third append skill is an Anti-Lancer Attack Damage Aptitude, and her Noble Phantasm, which is a B+, is Brunhilda Romantica. Until death, divide two apart, deals damage to one enemy, increases party's critical star uh, generation rate by 50% for three turns, and then it deals extra damage to Brunhilda's beloved, en beloved enemies, which is 150% at charge level 1, and if you get it all the way to the final charge, it is 200%. Who are Brunhilda's beloved? It is not just uh, her favorite. It is like a list of dudes that she sees as like good hero material. So you have Siegfried, you have Caesar, you have a lot of dudes. If you look into who she actually has class advantage against, if there's ever a boss that has Emia, Robin Hood, <laughs> Arash, Tesla, uh, Toa, Toda, Napoleon, William Tell, um, Azavatvan, Paris, I go oh, Calamity Jane. All right, go get it, girl. Uh, Super Orion, Zenobia, and Minino Minamoto no Tamatoma. Then she will instantly eviscerate them, I think. <laughs> but actually, there's a decent number of dudes that are on this list that are just like, yeah, if you ever fight them, she's really going to put work into them. Uh, just the chances of actually fighting them are maybe not. It's maybe a little bit niche outside of like specific like challenge quest type stuff. Which, funny enough, in one of these events here, you will fight Arash, so you can actually uh, completely decimate him if you have Brunhilda. And that's the unit. I think she's kind of, except for that first skill, which is a little bit outdated uh, because it's old, obviously. The other two skills seem perfectly fine to me. If you're a big fan of Brunhilda, I think that's the main reason you would pull for her, especially if you have Vich and uh, Oberon. <laughs> Here's the, the, the secret thing, the secret sauce about a lot of these uh, buster dudes. You can make, even if the unit is not 100% great, which I think this unit is pretty solid actually, but if you have those two together, you can kind of force your way through a lot of issues. <laughs> and that's what I kind of feel like with her. Yeah, if you have those two, I think you'll be perfectly fine to just kind of to completely destroy. Um, and that's the unit, Brynhilda. Now let's go into Sun Nero Claudius, aka Summer Nero. Her first skill, Rampaging Privilege EX, charges on MP gauge. If own HP is less than 50%, increase on MP generation rate for 3 turns. Her MP up is 50% and her MP rate is 50%. Her second skill is the Seven Crown C, increases on attack for 3 turns, increases on defense for 3 turns, ignores own defense, class advantage, advantages against all classes for 3 turns. This is an insane skill. Uh, takes one uh, one percent uh, one percent one x damage from them. Thirty percent attack up, thirty percent defense. This ability I don't think is on any other. I, I mention it every single time, and no one's corrected me. I'm pretty positive this is the unit that only has this. I think some bosses might have this. She has this as a skill, and it's crazy that they just gave it to a summer unit. <laughs> And now the Undying Magus grants one ally gut status for one time three turns, revives for one HP, and increases their attack for three turns. 50%. Cooldown is seven. Her second cooldown is five. And her first skill cooldown is six. So, writing B, territory creation A, plus, and item construction A, uh, odd. EX. Her third skill is a anti ruler, increases attack against ruler enemies. And her noble phantasm. Is ignores invincibility for one turn, activates first, deals damage to all enemies, and then increase own NP damage for one turn. And it's 30, uh, 300% is the obvious, 300% at MP level 1 and MP level 5, it is 500%. And at uh, overcharge effect, it's 20% MP damage and it's 60% at the final level. I just realized I never said Brunhilda's uh, attack that she gave. It's six, it is not 600%. It is 800% at MP level 1, and at the final MP5, it's uh, 12,000. Okay. Uh, like I said, if you have Oberon and Vich, she's pretty damn good. Having a caster that literally <laughs> ignores her own defense class disadvantages for three turns, but still, it is three turns. The number one thing that will usually get a lot of things killed is that they uh, just instantly get murked by class disadvantage. So for her to just be like, nah, I don't take that from that. And that me includes Berserkers, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, all classes. Any class that would potentially deal extra damage to her, they just don't. 
which is pretty nice. Now, the funny thing is, I do mention that, but she is mainly for grinding. And for grinding purposes, I think she'll work out pretty well. Because she has a 50% MP charger. It's on a cooldown of 6. So you can definitely use that on turn 1. And then Vich and do all the bunch of other stuff. And you can easily grind with her. I love Summer Nero, so maybe I'm a little bit biased here. I've always wished I had this unit. I might even still throw a single multi to see if I can get her. Uh, not enough to warn an entire video, but with Summer coming up, it's kind of hard to justify uh, summoning on this banner. And that's his banner. And then there's also old CEs like Battle Olympia, Food Coliseum, and Muscular Cavalier. Do you want... Oh, oh, the video's done. Bye. Okay. Uh, my family came in, so that's why I had to very abruptly end the video, but they're gone, so I can kind of continue on. Thank you guys very much for watching the video. As always, you can leave a like, uh, comment, and subscribe. Tell me how you plan to handle NeroFest, whether or not you're going to be summoning, and whether or not you're going to be going crazy lotto grinding. Um, and yeah, it supports the channel a whole bunch, and like I said at the beginning, it's been a lot of support for the Vigo videos, and I appreciate it a whole bunch. And I'll see you guys next time. Hopefully they will have announced Nero Fest by the time they've already, uh, this video already came out. Actually, I'm probably going to record something of me saying like, hey, this was recorded before they announced Nero Fest, just in case. Yeah, it'd be a good idea. All right. And if you don't hear that at the beginning, it means it was not announced by the time I finished editing this video. <laughs> so I'll see you guys in the next, uh, in the next video. Peace out.